Hey everyone, uh, Ned Canty here coming to you after day five of Bohem rehearsal. Uh, we just finished. Uh, we had a, a pretty long but very rewarding session today focused primarily on uh, Act One, second half of Act One, uh, from Mimi's entrance through to the end of the act. Uh, it was actually the first day that we've uh, been able to work that stuff, uh, and it was a really good day. You know, I, I think one of the reasons why pieces like Bohem are uh, around for as long as they're around, why they are masterpieces, is that the even within the story, within the music, within uh, the framework of everything that's there on the page, there are a million little tiny decisions and a million directions that you can take things in and, and you know the fun of working on one of these pieces is figuring out you know what's the perfect combination with uh, this particular group of people that is going to uh, really sculpt what's there on the page into something that's uh, that's interesting and honest and sincere. So uh, we spent a lot of time doing that today, and it's uh, a wonderful cast in that they are both open to new ideas and trying anything, uh, but they are also not afraid to have strong opinions about what a moment is. And uh, you know, I think that's the perfect balance. You know, you want. Uh, you want it to be a collaboration, you want it to be a discussion, uh, because the, the best work on stage is going to come out of that. It's going to come out of everyone saying what they think, uh, you know, potentially challenging each other, and then together coming up with uh, what is the strongest possible combination of ideas, uh, thoughts, intentions, etc. Uh, so we spent a lot of time today uh, talking about uh, the backstories of characters. You know, Rodolfo, has he... Has he been truly in love before? Is he like Monticello, where there are a couple of women or one woman who is sort of in and out of his life? Uh, you know, where is he in the cycle of his love life? You know, we talked a lot the other day about where he is in the cycle of his artistic life, which is, you know, kind of at a bit of a low point. You know, he's got this writer's block. He burns his play because it's so frustrating to him. Uh, and it's possible that he's uh, also at a similar point in his love life, if for no other reason that when he does meet Mimi, all of a sudden his poetry seems to uh, find him again. You know, he's, he's able to talk in these heightened metaphors in this, this very beautiful way. So we talked a lot about that, and, uh, you know, we, we hit on at the end one of the, the biggest challenges of uh, producing opera in America today, which is there are certain moments or certain lines where the words alone are so blunt uh, or so single leveled in a way that when you read them in a surtitle, uh, they, they don't have the subtlety, they don't have the layers that you get from the words supported by the music. And, you know, the art of writing and, and, uh, and cueing titles is, uh, you know, really an art in and of itself. Uh, but there's a moment at the end of Act One where, after their introductions, Mimi and Rodolfo's introductions to each other, they sing their arias, they're feeling it, there's passion, there's heat, all of those things. Uh, he says to her, tell me that you love me. And she says, I love you. And when you read those words, you kind of think, really? You know, you just met each other, you know, and it, it, it has that kind of scent of opera, you know, in, in the bad way, uh, where people think that the stories are silly or unreal or whatever. Uh, when you hear it, when you hear the music, when you contextualize it, uh, when you hear the words said, there are these seven different, 20 different layers going on about what uh, uh, the experimental nature of saying that to someone about uh, retaining just enough plausible deniability that if it goes wrong, you'd say, oh, I was just kidding. I was just, you know, pretending I was being fancy, whatever. Um, and the music allows you to have that, but, uh, you know, it's that darn surtitle that is so blunt, that is so plain, you know, and you see this with, at the end of uh, uh, Giovanni, when Anna asks Ottavio for one more year, or at the end of Figaro, where Figaro uh, asks the Countess for forgiveness, where the, the sincerity and truth of the moment is really conveyed by the music, uh, and the words themselves are, are very simple, and when they're just read, uh, they're overly blunt. So uh, the good news is, after talking about this uh, a, a lot, I think, uh, mainly due to the uh, sort of skill and commitment of uh, Angela Fout and Eric Barry, or, or uh, Rodolfo and Mimi, uh, I think we 
ended up with something that uh, sort of takes the curse off of a lot of that, that feels real and organic, but also a, a little bit awkward the way that these, you know, uh, first dates uh, often are, even when it's just a woman coming into your apartment, fainting, and uh, asking you to light her candle, which, you know, as everyone knows, is the ideal first date. So uh, tomorrow we're back to Act Two. Uh, we're going to be doing some more chorus work, and I will give you an update uh, from Café Momus tomorrow. Thanks.